Previously on the channel, I installed a Dometic all-in-one 40 amp lithium battery system into the Jeep just to run the fridge. And I was getting food to charge this off a 12 volt keyed feed in the Jeep. Worked really well when I drove the Jeep. Uh, if I left the Jeep sitting around for a day or two, um, the fridge just drained the battery and uh, it didn't work that well. I've done a video on the shortcomings of these where uh, I can't have a solar food and a 12 volt food running at the same time, I'd have to switch over the, uh, the plugs. So, I've installed a completely new lithium battery system into this. Stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm Daryl and welcome to the channel. Yes, um, you would have previously seen me install this all-in-one Dometic lithium battery package into the Jeep. Uh, it worked really well um, if I drove the Jeep uh, every day or every second day. If I just let it parked for a couple of days um, with no solar input, it wouldn't work. So last episode, and I'll link to it up here, you would have seen that I put a 82 watt, I think, solar panel onto the bonnet of the Jeep. That's worked really well and it keeps the battery topped, but it won't work with this all-in-one system. Before we have a quick look, I've probably gone through this in an early video, but packaging in these vehicles is really difficult. You've got a two-door Jeep Wrangler, no matter what version you have, you've got basically a cargo area with two suits. So where do you mount a lithium battery in there. You may be able to find a bespoke mount or you may be able to mount up a mount yourself. Um, the problem though is if you put a normal lithium battery in there, no matter what size, you've got to have a battery tray, you've got to have somewhere to tie it down and it starts getting more and more complex. So I went looking for something other than that. Now the battery I've chosen is a 50 amp hour iTech World battery and it's in a metal case with its own mounting brackets. So the whole, how do I mount it? How do I strap it down? Blah, blah, blah. It's just out the window. All I had to do was uh, screw this into the wheel tub of the Jeep and it works really, really well. Yes, it is upside down. It just worked out that way. Uh, it's got a 12 volt cigarette outlet on one end and that's why it's upside down because I can get access to this. On the other end are two Anderson plugs and one's your input and one's your output. Uh, and you can split those up, whatever you want. So that's worked out really well. Because this is in a metal case, you've got no problems with shorting out anything or the like. It's just a nice rugged option that packages really nicely into the TJ. To stop the fridge rubbing against this, um, because I've just got a cheap slide that's too wide. Uh, I've put a piece of aluminium angle here with a bit of felt over it and the fridge just sits against there. It's strapped down um, and there's probably about that much gap between the, uh, the fridge and the battery. So all in all, a really simple install um, that's quite rugged. Now to keep this charged, I've got a BCDC system, a Red Arc 1225D. I, I have already had that in my possession. I didn't have to purchase that. Um, but this is an awesome little unit and I can't recommend it enough. Um, they do have a 1240D and a 1250D now, um, which would give you 40 or 50 amps charge to the battery at max. Um, this will only do 25 amps at a time. Um, but because I already had this, it's only a 50 amp battery. Um, this is more than suitable for purpose. The reason I've mounted it here and not in the engine bay because this version of the uh, charger can live in the engine bay is because it was just close to the battery and it saved a lot of wiring. The foods that I've got coming into here are direct from the battery on the Jeep. So I get alternator charge to this when the Jeep started up. Um, and I've got the solar panel on the bonnet and unregulated food running directly to this. This wants an unregulated food. Um, and, and this is more than happy with whatever's coming out of the solar panel. It's within its um, range and you do need to look that up 
because um, that was a little bit of a shock with the all-in-one charger when the solar panel wouldn't work with the all-in-one battery system. Now to get some information about charging and uh, battery percentage and everything like that, I purchased a really cheap Renergy, it looked like a Renergy, unbranded Renergy system off eBay. Uh, I think it was 50 bucks or 60 bucks, something around there. Not happy with it. Um, it works okay, it looks as though the the information it's telling me is okay, but on the Renergy branded version, it said it had six meters of cable. This has, I don't know, half, it wouldn't even be half a meter. Um, and with the shunt, there is no bracket to mount the shunt anywhere. So you get what you pay for, I think, but I thought it was um, interesting just to, to try one of these because I have seen a few people on YouTube try them. As I said, it seems to work okay once you put all the info into it, but not very happy with the length of the cable, um, my mounting options, and um, after using it for a few weeks, I do find that I just don't come around to have a look at it. So. I'm changing that over. So what did I get? After looking around, I decided upon an app-based system so I could see the information on my phone, which means that it's mounted on the 67 Designs phone mount in my vehicle when I'm driving, um, and I can look at it you know, within the camper or the like when we're parked up. Um, there's two versions of this Victron Energy one. There's a cheaper version that isn't water resistant and there's this and there's only about 50 bucks in it uh, between the two versions or less if you looked around. Um, I think this was uh, 230 or $240. This is IP65 rated and they actually say you can mount it on the outside of uh, a boat cabin or the like. So it's a good quality uh, item and um, It'll be interesting to see how it goes. The good thing though I found about the IP65 version are uh, that the wires are uh, already connected. There's a, a wire to connect up to the positive, uh, a wire to connect up to your battery in the vehicle if you wanted to see that, and there's also a cable to connect up to an external display if you want that. So all the options are here going forward, and I think it's just, you know, buy once, cry once. But this seems to be a really good quality unit from what I've seen, so it'll be interesting. Basically though, with these, is that you connect one side of these to the negative terminal on your battery, and then this terminal here then becomes your negative terminal on the battery for all of your negatives um, and it just reads what's going through. So you want to mount this somewhere close to your battery, a short cable going from the negative terminal on the battery to the battery minus terminal and on this side all, all of your loads, everything, everything that draws power or puts power into your battery, all the negative loads need to go through here and to get to that extent, because um, you probably don't want to be loading up all this, I've put in a negative bus bar here. And I've just screwed that to the top of the wheel well and the carpet just goes over it. But all of your negs go here. So we'll just put the fridge back in now. Now with the fridge in, you can see the battery is packaged up nicely and it's kind of out of the way there. Um, it also gives me, as I said, the cigarette lighter output at the back of it. Um, the shunt, I've mounted the shunt just on this lip here of the body tub. Uh, so it's just the Bluetooth piece that hangs above it. That's fully waterproof, so there shouldn't be an issue with it there. And I can't see it getting knocked or anything either. Uh, wiring is all tucked in underneath the um, the carpet and I think it's turned out quite good. Now on the shunt you can see the Bluetooth light is flickering which means it's ready to connect to the phone. And if I hit the Victron Connect app, there's our shunt ready to go. So if I click on that, it's connecting.
and we're connected. And it needs a firmware update. So we'll just update that. So with our settings on this, I've set the battery capacity to 50 amps, the charged voltage to 13.5. That's what iTech World suggests we use. So that's where it is. Our discharge floor, I've just set that to 5%. Um, our Pukert exponent is 1.05. That's what the manual suggests that we use. Our charge efficiency factor, because it's a lithium battery, it's at 99% because they're very, very efficient. Um, and apart from that, that's about all the settings that we needed to change. There's some alarms and things like that. We're not going to worry about that today. Um, and if I turn the fridge down, And if I turn the fridge down, that's now come on. You can see it's starting to use more current. And you can see it's working as it should. I'll turn the vehicle on and we can see what happens when I do that. And with the vehicle running, you can see we've got a whole different set of figures and we've got a whole heap of power coming into it to, to charge this battery. Um, very happy with this. This shunt is so quick. It is, it is just so quick to update itself. Whereas the other one, uh, the cheap eBay special version, it was clunky and this feels like... <laughs> This feels like a pro version, which I suppose it is. So with all of that running now, I think we've got a very suitable 12 volt auxiliary system for this type of vehicle where we don't have a lot of storage or places to put things. Um, it's packaged well. Uh, it's all fairly waterproof. Uh, if I leave the side curtain off and it rains, the shunt is waterproof. Um, we're not gonna have any dramas with that. The, the battery with it being down here and being contained in a case, um, I can't see too many problems with that. If you know you go through a river crossing, it's, it's fairly high. It's not as if it's under the seats, um, which is the lowest point in the cab. Um, I'm pretty chuffed with how it goes. The only upgrades I can see is that if I need a 100 amp battery instead of a 50, I can put another one in parallel to this. And the total cost of that would probably be $100 more than buying a single 100 amp battery. But I couldn't get a 100 amp battery in a case like this, in this size that would fit where this fits, because this fits really well. Um, if I did get another one, I could just mount it in front of this along the wheel well, and it would work out quite well. So. I, th I think I've chosen quite well. Um, so I think I've chosen well with regards to components. Um, the components all seem to work well together. Uh, we've got, you know, when we're driving, it'll charge it up very quickly because it's only charging up a 50 amp battery. And when we're parked, the solar panel on the bonnet, while it won't being only 82 watts, it's not going to take it from zero to 50 amps in a couple of hours. It will continually put power into the battery. Um, so it's not as if with the fridge running, it's just draining. It will give us more time. Um, so that's a good thing. The only upgrade I can see with regards to that is putting uh, another Anderson plug in the solar line. So I can plug in a, a bigger solar blanket, which I don't have yet. I still have to buy one of those. But that's about it for today, guys. I'll report on how things go as time goes on, as I do. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.